and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And in today's video we're going to talk about what would happen if motorcycles disappeared. And this isn't like a, an alarmist video or anything, it's just kind of chatting about, you know, the impending ban on selling, you know, new combustion engine bikes. And, you know, is that is that going to be something that causes motorcycles to disappear? Um, in the long term, is it something that's going to cause us to see the end of the likes of track days and stuff eventually? Because you know, I'm I'm thinking long term here. Obviously, this is not something that's going to happen in the next 20 years, but maybe in the next 30 or 40. You know, my uncle, for instance, is still doing track days at 60 plus. I would like to do track days when I'm 60 plus, and well, if I live that long, <laughs> and um, obviously that would require bikes to still be around and in a in a reasonable safe way to, to actually do track days. One thing that I see is possibly fe affecting all of that is um, you know the fact that electric bikes as good as they might be and all that you know you see it on uh, Moto E when they crash uh, they're very very dangerous so for instance the most recent track day I was at there was multiple red flags from crashes uh, but worst case in that in that situation you have some spilled uh, fluids or whatever else and you know maybe possibly a fire etc and you know obviously people getting hurt so hopefully people don't ever get too badly hurt you know, no one wants to see that uh, that is not good but that's kind of that's kind of I suppose the subject of this video is, is you know what do you think do you think we're gonna see an end uh, to bikes in general you know especially you know obviously we always hear this talk of self-driving cars you know and our self-driving car is going to be the death of you know the personal personal transport vehicle whether that be a car whether it be a motorbike whether it be your own camper van you know our self-driving car is going to take over we're just going to all step out of our door every day and get an automated taxi to work or whatever else personally i think that would suck and i really hope it doesn't ever happen like to a large degree now i do think self-driving cars it's very windy here could actually be a good thing in a way um, because it would get people who don't want to drive off the roads and generally people who don't want to drive drives generally people who don't want to drive are the ones who are on their phones for instance and generally just crap drivers because they're not driving for the enjoyment of it they're not driving and they're not engaged with it because they don't care you know what i mean there's no there's no emotion there when i ride a bike even if it's to and from work i am engaged i absolutely love doing it um you know it's it's just something that i absolutely adore doing um you know whether whether that's right or wrong i would sooner you chopped me up into tiny little pieces and somehow i stayed alive and then i got eaten by like hundreds of thousands of ants all at once then you took my bikes slash cars off me i have zero interest in that ever so i suppose that's my stance on bikes disappearing but yeah what do, what do you think because i think it's um you know bikes are for the large majority just becoming like a pure hobby you know what i mean not that many people use them in western society anyway to get to and from work um and i mean western is in like Western Europe, America, you know, Ireland, the UK, etc. It's not really a thing that's used by too many as, commu as commuters anymore and, and, you know, all around utility bikes. And I do think, you know, that's something, speaking to one of my subscribers, Stephen, and I know he agrees with me, and he's someone who has seen a shift in how bikes are made and designed over the years, um, and, and, and which is a, is a huge wealth of knowledge, speaking to the, the likes of Stephen. He's worked in the industry, he's ridden bikes his whole life. Um, so, you know, seeing and hearing from him that he has seen bikes become, you know, from these utility vehicles that can do everything to this kind of, you know, passion horse that you, that you go out for a day out on a Sunday or whatever else that aren't used every single day. And, you know, that's going to that's gonna obviously keep affecting it as well. And a huge problem with that is the more that happens, then the more expensive bikes get because they become a toy. Um, it's why I love 
still seeing the likes of Honda make the likes of the Honda CB500X, etc. Because those are, in relative terms, affordable, do most things bikes. I don't think there's any one do everything bike anymore. You know, obviously, the likes of the GS is a, is a huge tank that can travel around the world. And as uh, Bruce, aka T41, has proved, they can also be pretty capable on the track. Uh, well, not just Bruce, but a lot of marshals at racing events, etc. I've also proved they, they are perfectly capable bikes at speed. So, you know, they're the likes of the GS, the likes of big adventure bikes, they're probably the closest to do everything bikes that, that are out there. But then obviously, if you know, if you work in a city and stuff, you probably want something smaller, lighter, more nimble, more fuel efficient, um, with a cheaper price tag. You know, that's, there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of things that you could think that you could uh, that you could think about that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's um, it's just one of those things, I suppose, isn't it? It's one of those things that it's like, well, what's it gonna be? You know, what's what is the oh cool, that's a deadly car. You know, what's the the, the kind of the the decision point is? The decision point would come, I suppose, at what is most important to you. Is what's most important to you light, nimble, fuel efficient, or is what's most important to you big? You know big fuel capacity big power big size big engine you know there's there's a okay there's a lot of things that affect influence your decisions on buying purchasing bikes especially you know in my opinion there is anyway and i suppose you know to say that they're disappeared that you know could they disappear it's probably a little bit dramatic you know i think i think enough bikes will be around especially classics and vintages and stuff you know people like me are not gonna let bikes just fade away so you know it could be a generational thing though maybe in 100 years 150 years if, if you know humans in general are still alive it could be a thing that bikes have, have disappeared off the face of the earth and and you know feel free to make response videos or whatever to this I'm, I'm actually interested to start a conversation on this is do we think that bikes in the long run are gonna be a sustainable everyday do everything object you know, the likes of uh, the Aprilia Touareg give me hope um, because, you know, again, the likes of Hippo Drones, uh, well, Pete, a.k.a. Hippo Drones, um, you know, he does absolutely everything on that. He green lanes on it. He, he, maybe he rides to work. I don't know, does he? I, th I assume he does. You know, he goes on trips, camps. Uh, he goes about his daily life. He motor vlogs. It, it, it's, it's one of those things, and I do think that that type, that style of bike, is gonna become the new kind of utilitarian do everything machine whereas back in the day it was your uh you know your what is it a U, universal japanese motor ugms that ugm style that shape and um, with the flat seat that you could just strap anything to that was definitely the util utilitarian do everything kind of style uh back in the day so i think we are seeing a shift towards something more you know adventure -y. Is what I'm going to call it because I think that's the kind of globally accepted moniker for a bike uh, like the Touareg is a, a mid-size adventure maybe um, and I do think that's 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 becoming the do everything bike you know is, is that it could it do a track day probably not uh, but you know do everything on in everyday life uh, definitely it fills that role do everything that you might want a motorcycle to do maybe not but you know it is what it is I suppose as well, you know, we've been we've been bolstered, we've been given hope uh, in this fight against the dying of the of the light, I suppose. Um, you know, by recent successes of synthetic fuels. You know, at the moment, I, I read that they predict they could actually produce synthetic fuel right now for about about three euro a liter, um, which is obviously excessively expensive in comparison to what fuel costs right now, even at its massively elevated. Price. There's Kells Priory. I've done a video on that. I'll leave a link up there if you want to see it. Um, but definitely, you know, it, it's something that could become a thing in the future, especially if they manage to supersize uh, synthetic fuel production. Um, that's something that actually could become a much better option than the likes of electric. I, I understand electric. I'm not going to say I like it. I, I appreciate the technology. I appreciate what what can be done with that technology i appreciate what has been done with that technology you know i appreciate the styling the power delivery etc i i i i'm just going to say blanketly i appreciate i suppose the, the technology and and leave it at that but 
electric bikes definitely they have a uh, but and electric cars they have a challenge electric vehicles have a challenge with range versus charge time you know the range on this is 160 miles which some electric vehicles can already either match or beat um, but my charge time is you know less than five minutes because I can just stop at a fuel station and fuel it up and that's what you're kind of competing with you know what I mean it's 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 all well and good saying oh you know you can stop here there and everywhere but the infrastructure currently doesn't exist for you know large-scale electric charging I suppose so that's how I put it especially you know most of the world it's not so you're not going to travel around the world on an electric bike you, you could you absolutely could travel around the world on an electric bike but it wouldn't be oh no I forgot those stones in the slow slow down time um, but it's not like it'd be the enjoyable trip that you might want it's not like it's something that you could just you know rely on that you could charge it easily especially you know in, in um, less populated areas uh, less developed areas it would definitely be a problem in my opinion so I, I just don't see electric as being the option right now you know obviously triumph for making strides with fun factors like the t1 but then that goes back to could you even use it on a track you know would you actually be allowed insurance wise to bring a te1 on track on a track day right now you know as is any track in ireland going to want to be equipped to deal with that lithium fire is any track in the UK which is a much bigger place with a lot more bikes going to want to be equipped insurance wise and uh, and you know safety wise to deal with you know a, a crash electric motorcycle I don't know uh, is the answer I don't personally I, I, I wouldn't you know what I mean you're investing all that cost all that all that money for something that not that many people currently use and I just don't see the adoption going up that much anytime soon. It's going to be slightly more, definitely, because the, the current very elevated fuel prices are going to scare people towards electric vehicles. But at the end of the day, what's the payback period on them? You know what I mean? I still do think that electric vehicles are for people who have spare money to, to spend on them. I don't, think, I don't think your average Joe is ever going to spring for an electric vehicle you know unless they can make it make sense financially over five years ten years you know what I mean I personally I couldn't justify it you know it's it's just it to me it's just another vehicle that I can't service myself it's just another vehicle that if I if, I, if it breaks on me I'm kind of screwed you know it's why I don't really want to go for brand new stuff either because they're too complicated and too hard to fix for your average home DIY person like myself um, Except maybe Suzuki's, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd think I would buy uh, the current for sale Suzuki GSX-R 750 in America because it's still the same simple bike it has been for a long time and I like that, you know, it has limited electronics and I like that That's a, that's a good thing, you know, it's in, my, in my head that's a good thing and I'm not a Luddite, I'm not anti-technology but for me I think synthetic fuel is the most sensible approach that would help stop bikes disappearing and you know the, the title of this video wasn't meant to be clickbaity it was meant to be conversational to start a conversation as do well you know what how do people feel i know some people are kind of worried about this um but for me i, I don't think so i think we're pretty safe you know i think um i think bikes are here to stay and i do think that synthetic fuel is going to be a, a bit of a savior for us uh auto heads in the long run i think Synthetic fuels are going to be something that lets us keep our fire-breathing machines, that let us let us see development long into the future of those machines, that let us let us have hope. <laughs> let us have hope again. Because you know, I think uh, a lot of the world these days, a lot of government stuff is it's a lot of doom saying, and I ignore pretty much all of it. You know, uh, at the end of the day, if you tell us we shouldn't be using fuel. You gotta enable people not to use fuel. Most people can't afford not to use fuel. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's it is what it is. You know you gotta you gotta give us an actual alternative, not just say if you don't stop, it's gonna be bad and stuff. It's like all right, cool, but uh, I mean this is how I get to work. You know it'd be worse if I stop going to work, because then I'd have no money and I wouldn't be able to eat. Uh, I'm 
I am a very simple person. I think of things very simplistically. And, you know, for me, if you have, if you want people to change, you have to make the solution better than the current system. You can't just, you can't just tell someone, oh, but we all might die sometime in the future though. You know what I mean? Like weather definitely, uh, by historical trending, has gotten worse. CO2 emissions is, I think, inargu inarguably, from a scientific point, elevated. And all that's having bad effects and storms are getting worse, etc. You know, you can, you can look at it as natural climate progression if you want. Uh, I personally don't. I look at what scientists are saying and I believe them. For the most part, obviously, they're not always right. Scientists admit that themselves. Science is an ever-evolving thing, so they could be wrong on certain aspects. I love this corner here. Watch this, watch this. Oh, 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 yeah. You're riding close. I love getting my elbow right near the things. Anyway. But I do think that the, the most logical route to pursue is synthetic fuels. I, I really, I don't see electricity ever fully taking over uh, you know, a fluid that you can just transport that generates the electricity, uh, generates, the, generates the power to make the thing go on board. Um, electricity is harder to transmit. Um, you know, we have, a, we have an infrastructure set up for transmitting large amounts of this explosive fluid and putting it into the things that we want to put it in. Like I said, the electricity infrastructure isn't there for cars. The storage medium is, is kind of worse. My fuel tank never gets smaller. Um, you know, batteries do technically get smaller in a capacity sense. And I don't think hydrogen is anywhere close um, to an adoptable technology yet. So it's not even worth talking about really, in my opinion. But it is obviously there too. But yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think bikes could disappear? Do you think we'll actually see the end of the combustion engine in 2030 and 2040? Let me know your opinion. Like I said, personally, I think we're good. I think that the alternatives that exist just aren't good enough to actually displace the technology that's currently there right now. And I think that, you know, if companies are smart about it, they will push for the likes of synthetic fuels much faster than they will um, for the likes of electricity. I think, I think the actual overall solution isn't going to be one thing. You know, I think we're going to see an adoption of a, like a multifaceted technological thing where we'll have synthetic fuel, we'll probably have a certain amount of normal fuel left, we'll have electricity and we'll probably have hydrogen doing some things. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't need to be one for all. You know what I mean? It's not like every train in the country is a turbo supercharged petrol engine. You know what I mean? It's not like every bike is going to be diesel. You know, it, it, everything needs to have a blend. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. But yeah, let me know if you have any ideas, any comments on what I said, any critiques, any things you'd like me to discuss further or look into further. Um, you know, obviously this was just a chat, but if you want me to look into some data or whatever else, I can do that. MCN did a very good article recently on the payback period for electric vehicles. And um, I read that obviously, and it, I, I read a lot about this stuff just because of an interest in the technology and where we're going with it. So I will leave a link for that MCN article if I can find it. And I would advise reading it because I did think it was interesting. And uh, yeah, anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching. A special thank you as always to all of my patrons. I do appreciate your support a lot. And yeah, until next time, thank you again. Adios. Outro crew, let me know what you think. I mean, my preference is heavily in the corner of synthetic fuels. I would, I would much rather be able to see, you know, something crazy from Kawasaki again in 20, 30 years. Something nuts like a supercharged turbocharged monster beast just for the fun of it but we'll definitely see the death of that if electricity takes over on its own so yeah let me know what your preferred technology is um, and is there a reason behind it is it for climate is it for whatever let me know personally i think if we go synthetic fuels and that can negate all the bad emissions and whatnot that would be by far the best so yeah let me know what you think bye